Everything that you just saw was shot with this guy. It's the 135 millimeter T 2.9 from Sure. This is a fully manual anamorphic filmmaking lens that is a beast if you're looking to get some tight shots. It's got great compression. It's got beautiful bokeh. We're gonna go and talk about everything that you need to know about this lens and my experience with it so far. And of course, thank you so much to Sure for sending me this lens for review. This is my first anamorphic lens. This is my first total filmmaking lens. And honestly, I'm pretty excited about it. So here is some basic specs to get you going on this lens, guys. This is not totally for beginners. If you're looking to get into filmmaking, a completely manual lens is gonna take some getting used to. And this does have a 1.8 times squeeze. And that means that this thing is going to compress your image on the sensor, and you're actually gonna to have to de-squeeze it in post. It does sound a little bit intimidating, but it's not that bad. And if you do like that anamorphic look, man, this thing gives you some fantastic footage. One curious thing is that most of the other lineup that Sure has is a 1.6 times squeeze. So you're gonna have to get creative if you are using all of these lenses together in making your footage match perfectly. So first let's talk about the build and features of this lens. Now it does feel fantastically well made. It's a metal construction and it just feels great. It is a little bit heavy around 1400 grams. And as you can see, it's not a small lens. So working with this on a gimbal might be a little bit tricky. In terms of controls right on the lens, we've got your focus ring as well as an aperture ring, allowing you to go from T2.9 all the way to T16. It's a quite a short throw as well as the focus ring here. Now, a lot of filmmaking lens have a very, very long throw when it comes to focus. This one is really not that far at all, as you can see there. Hard stops on both sides. Now for me, I personally like this feature. It's not a ton of throw and typically in the photography and YouTube video world, that's kind of a good thing. But for professional filmmakers, they do like as much precise control as you can. But for me, I find it absolutely adequate in finding my subject. On the front of the lens, you will have a big 82 millimeter filter thread and on the back, a nice confident metal mount. And do note that it is not weather sealed, although you probably won't be out shooting this, this thing in the direct rain and weather. So not too much of a concern. Other than that, it does have a quarter 20 mount here for extra stability if need be as well. Now the Fast 2.9 is going to give you an incredibly shallow depth of field, and that can be a little bit problematic if you're not used to focusing manually. So stop down to avoid that, but in terms of what you're gonna be giving up, it's going to be a beautiful out of focus background and foreground. The compression is fantastic, and the bokeh with 12 aperture blades is, for me, quite nice. Now in terms of close up shooting or minimum focus distance, you're looking at about three feet or 90 centimeters. So you can get quite close to your subject. The compression is very nice. And for me, I like the shots that I'm getting out of this lens, even though typically when I'm shooting video, I'm usually reaching for something a little bit wider. If I could have only one filmmaking lens, I don't think the 135 millimeters would be that lens, but for a supplementary lens to say a 50 or even a 35 millimeter, this thing is just fantastic. Next, in terms of the optical quality of this lens in general, it's more than sharp enough and for a dedicated filmmaking lens, sharpness is not of paramount concern. In fact, I actually like a little bit of character, a little bit of distortion, and sharpness is absolutely not the most important thing for me. Having said that, this lens is going to be more than adequate in terms of sharpness if you need it, even up into the corners in most cases. In terms of distortion, there's just a tiny bit. It is very well controlled and definitely no deal breakers there. Now in terms of focus breathing, there is a little bit of this to note. Now it is a 135 millimeter and typically any telephoto lens such as this one is going to suffer from a bit of focus breathing. Once again, it's gonna be personal preference. I don't mind it at all, but some people are going to be absolute fanatics when it comes to having no focus breathing. So that's really gonna be up to you. In terms of the cinematic flair that you get out of this lens, I think it's fantastic and I really enjoy the look. And in certain situations, I think it just adds a ton to the project. In terms of mounts available, I did get this for my Sony E-mount cameras, but it's also available for L-mount, E-mount, RF mount, Z mount, and maybe even EF mount coming. So you're gonna be covered for a lot of bases. One thing to know, if you are a Sony shooter using a new camera like the A7S III or the A7 IV with image stabilization built in, unfortunately, it's not gonna work with this lens or any of the Sure lenses. 
It's just a limitation of the Sony ecosystem at the moment. And that is a bit unfortunate for me because of the awesome active stabilization that we're getting in today's cameras. Other than that, being my first anamorphic filmmaking lens, I am really enjoying this thing. And I think the footage is just fantastic. So yes, I would completely recommend this to you guys. Again, if this was your only filmmaking lens, it might be a little bit tight in certain situations indoors. But again, for a supplemental lens above and beyond something like a 50 or a 35 millimeter, I think this thing is just fantastic. Let's leave it at that, my friends. I hope this video helped you out. And if you have any questions or concerns, make sure you drop them down in the comments. If you didn't want to pick this lens up, I will drop affiliate links down below. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.